Hello all, and welcome back to another Doctor Who video. Today's video is going to be something slightly different because I'm not going to be reviewing something, but instead I'm going to be kind of having a laid back chat with you all because recently I went to London by myself to a Doctor Who convention to meet the wonderful Tom Baker, who of course played the fourth Doctor, arguably the most iconic Doctor of all time. He doesn't really do conventions in the North anymore, I don't think he really did them anywhere to be honest. I think that he mainly is small southern conventions, so I decided to go to the other side of the country solely to meet him within one day because let's face it he's 84 now and I've got a feeling that he may retire from conventions completely soon because you know he is getting on and I think that he definitely deserves a break with the amount of work that he does and yeah I think that it was definitely a trip worth it of course I did meet a lot of people down there however today's video is going to be a little bit of sort of as I say a sit back reflection video of what happened because I decided not to vlog it because one I couldn't really bother to uh two I didn't really want to anywhere because it was only a day down London I I kind of wanted just to sit back and enjoy it and kind of take in the scenery and not need to be worried about vlogging or anything like that and also I didn't know what the venue was like and it turns out that it was pretty congested with a lot of people in and the actual place was quite small so it would have been quite inconvenient to actually film in anywhere so it's kind of a good job that I didn't. Well first off I'm just going to mention something that no doubt your eyes have automatically diverted to the thing that's currently on this week's display and it is of course the Doctor Who Series 12 box set. Oh it's exciting virtually every single person on the planet that I pretty much know has got this. I don't blame them because it's absolutely beautiful and I'm currently um, watching it at the minute. I've currently finished Robot and I've just watched all the special features for Robot as well so I've not actually watched the rest of the box set yet but no doubt a product review will be coming of this at some point in the near future. I decided to buy this because I in fact seen Adam the Ultimate Whovians whilst I was down London and yeah I absolutely loved it. I've seen a few other people's down there as well that had it signed by Tom and it looked absolutely stunning. Lee Binding has done an absolutely excellent job on this. See, I kind of decided to cave in and buy it literally on the Monday of me coming back from London being on the Saturday so yeah I pretty much ran through to my local HMV to get this on the day of its release and yeah I definitely recommend it because it looks as I say absolutely stunning and if you don't have any DVDs with the special features in which I can only have DVD files then this is worth the buy more so than those people that actually have the normal 2 to 10 DVDs because you get a lot for your money so yeah I guess I'll save the rest of the summary for this product once I've actually finished watching it in the review that no doubt will be in a few weeks. Thinking about London and actually what happened, basically the actual day itself was a rather hectic one. As you all most likely know, I live up north basically in this little town, sort of not exactly in the middle of nowhere, but it's quite very much the opposite of London. Literally just down the road I have the sea, it is rather quiet and tranquil and peaceful and basically the trains aren't very sort of frequent on a morning, let's just say that. And it's only been up until recently that I could actually get a train out of my local town at six o'clock in the morning. So I managed to do that this time around. The first train out of my town and I in fact got the last train back into my town as well at the very end of the day. So it was a very long day indeed. I got up at like 6am and then went through to my sort of nearest biggest station to get the King's Cross train down. It was very nice and high speed and I was rather excited because I've never gone on a journey sort of this long before on a train by myself and I was sort of, it was one of those things that I wanted to do to sort of boost my confidence a little bit more and just to have that experience because I feel like I need to do something like that and I need to push myself out there a bit more and actually get a bit more confidence and this was definitely a journey that did that and of course I got to King's Cross a station that as you all probably know I do very much adore because I love the way that it's all built and it's all very spacious for in the centre of London pretty much it is a rather nice airy station of course I got off the train and then went to go and scan my Oyster card went to go and see platform nine and three quarters as well and also generally have a little bit of look around King's Cross and then it got to the thing that I was probably and arguably most concerned about and it was navigating the tube and I, as you all know, I've been to London before, as you've probably seen in the Quest series, my first ever experience on the Tube was in fact completely recorded. And I have sort of this odd relationship with the Tube where I absolutely adore it, but it is in sort of the area that I absolutely hate. It is congested and it's crowded and it's quite warm and I get quite claustrophobic quite easily. So it was a big worry of mine, especially because unlike every other time that I've gone, I couldn't just go when I, if I was feeling stressed, I couldn't just look to somebody and kind of 
reassured and sort of I'll cling to them so I literally do all of the navigating by myself and yeah I needed to go to many different tube stations because as I said once again I needed to go and push myself and in fact spent the whole morning in London when I arrived at around 10 o'clock from 12 until midday pretty much doing some touristy sort of visiting which I've done previously on the times that I've been before but I wanted to do it by myself this time to navigate around London and actually see a few landmarks for myself. I was very proud because I didn't get lost whatsoever um, when I was by myself. I went to go and see uh, the Sherlock location from Speedy's Cafe and I got my photo to look outside that and it is a very nice location, very peaceful and yeah I was happy to find that because that is in fact quite close to King's Cross and then I went on the tube once again to uh, Oxford Circus and then walked from there to the BBC Broadcasting House expecting to go inside to see the TARDIS but for some reason uh, it's locked off now completely. I think it's a new security thing that the BBC have put in place where you can't in fact go in and look over the BBC news area anymore which is I love that so yeah it's a shame that's gone. I think that you need to book in advance or something like that to get a little pass through the post and yeah I couldn't see the TARDIS so essentially that was a bit of a wasted journey. Go to Oxford Circus but it wasn't really that long and then after that I went and hopped on the train I think one stop down the line to Piccadilly Circus to have a look at the new advertising advertisement board because I've just put the advertisements back up again with some new sort of high definition screens. So that was rather nice, once again probably the most crowded place that I'd been to so far that day by myself and I managed to tackle it quite well. And then I also went to I think a few other tube stations and then I also then went to Covent Garden of course somewhere that I've been many times before. And that was the first time where I truly felt like I could put down my phone because I was looking at sort of the sat nav on my phone and the tube map constantly. And when I got out of Covent Garden tube station to go to Forbidden Planet I kind of thought yeah I know what I'm doing from here because I've done it so many times before. So yeah I walked to Forbidden planet to see what else was in stock. It turns out, surprise surprise, that there wasn't really hardly anything in stock Doctor Who wise. There was tons of big finish as per usual, the majority of which have been the new releases that I've reviewed already this year. And then also in the actual physical product section, there was a few t-shirts, a few sonic screwdrivers, nothing new, probably a few titans in there as well from the old previous waves, some of which on reduce. However, I did pick up two of the Kawaii titans, so that's rather fun. These are a new sort of designed brand of titan uh, by Kelly Yates, and they're basically sort of a Japanese, Chinese kind of thing which is rather fun sort of a bit anime to an extent so yeah those are rather fun I picked up two blind boxes of those 7 99 each I didn't in fact look at these until later on in the day but I got the 12th doctor with his little sonic screwdriver he's rather cute they also got the 8th doctor as well which I was happy because I've not in fact got it 8th doctor even in the titan form yet like the actual like titan vinyl figures so yeah I finally got an 8th doctor in some format and I must say I really do quite like the design of these I feel like they're worth the money more than the titans because the titans feel like something that isn't worth $7.99 however even though this is around the same size you kind of feel like you're getting something for your money with this I think just because of the way they look a bit more interesting in design so yeah, I got those no doubt I'll in fact review those in the future with it being a new line I might do sort of a unboxing video with them show off the packaging and things like that it depends if people are interested in that but I'll probably end up doing it anywhere because hey I film in advance so no doubt when I say would you like to see that video chances are I've already filmed it already as I always do a shout out now to somebody that I didn't meet on the day of course because he will probably be dead now or at least I'm like 100% sure that he is dead. Harry Beck who invented the tube map because once again as per usual I picked up a variety of different tube maps whilst down London because I have like this fascination with the tube. Don't particularly know why. I do love a good train here and there. I love a few of the stations as well and this thing honestly it was designed it says at the bottom in the small print here in 1931 by Harry Beck or Henry Beck as he's known by um, a few of his closer friends and I think that this is I was in fact looking at this and reflecting on the way back home this is an amazing piece of design, honestly, to think that this, as I say, was created in 1930 and it's still in use today by many tourists, many people around London and it is also, once you actually get your head around it, quite easy to navigate from, it is rather simplistic and yeah, I do love a good tube map. Uh, so I got a lot of them whilst down there because I'm a sad human being and as well as liking Doctor Who, I do also like the London Underground. <laughs> And then moving on to the actual convention itself, because no doubt that is all what you clicked on this video for. Uh, I went to Westminster because that is where the actual convention was. It was in the very centre of London, right near Parliament. It was in fact just opposite Westminster. The actual convention itself was at Central Hall, uh, which is a rather nice looking building. It is literally like a town hall type place, has a cafe at the front. And it was rather nice and the entrance was rather spacious. And then the event itself was rather crammed with a lot of people. And yeah, I met Tom Baker and he was there from the midday onwards because he was at family 
Phantom um, earlier on in the day. And I met up with a few people down there as well, Galfrey Huvian, um, or he's known as Morgan. He's known as Galfrey Huvian on Twitter, so I constantly refer to him as that. I'm from Twitter, of course, because he likes my tweets quite a lot and replies to a few of them, and we've had a odd conversation here and then. It was really nice to meet him. In fact, I bumped into him in Forbidden Planet, and then I met Adam the Ultimate Huvian once again, who literally just an absolute tower of a person. I'm normally quite tall, but somehow I was stood next to Morgan and Adam, and I was the smallest person in the photo, which, you know, was probably the first hour time that's happened in real life, because yeah, I am quite a tall, blanky human being. And then other than that, who else did I meet? And Beth down there as well, who, of course, the creator of Time Ladies. I seen her way back in 2013, no, way back in 2015, in fact, at the Doctor Who Festival, so it was very nice to catch up with her once again, and she's done a lot of work recently, especially with Time Ladies, as you all probably know, and mainly based around sort of female representation in the fandom, as well as within the actual TV show itself. I also met up with Pete and Daniel, they are viewers that have, in fact, supported my channel for quite a while, and I didn't realise who they were to start with. However, when I realised what his Twitter name was, I've in fact seen his name multiple times on my feed for literally, it feels like, the past two years. So yeah, it was very nice to meet those two, they were very nice people, and we had a few conversations here and there. And then, of course, I met up with Adam Geeks, the Geeks handbag, of course, the one and only that I I've met many, many times before, and it was lovely to see him again. He went to Phantom earlier on in the day, so he was a little bit delayed from going to the actual convention stuff. He had a rather busy day. Then we also met quite a few other people down there as well. Just, just so lovely to see everybody, considering that I, in fact, haven't been to a convention since October, literally last year. It's very nice to be welcomed by everybody, and people are just so kind about the actual channel and really appreciative of the work that I've done. And speaking of that, Gal for Forever 97, I also met him down there as well. Of course, a fellow figure collector and merchandise collector who uh, I had a few conversations with, so that was very nice to see him. It's very nice to actually see a channel that is kind of on the same area as mine when it comes to sort of the different reviews and videos that he, of course, does see. Yeah, it's very nice to meet him as well. It feels like it's been a long time coming because I feel like he's been in London quite a lot and I've kind of missed him each and every time just because of the way that life works out. But yeah, it was very nice to meet him as well. And there was just so many others because uh, we went to the pub after and he had a few drinks uh, before I went back home, and there was just so many different people, and then it was lovely to see everybody interacting. A few friends uh, that Adam knew as well, who I'm now sort of talking to, which they were really nice and really welcoming, which was nice considering that they didn't really know who I was, or at least they've sort of seen my videos, and then it's the first ever time they've met me in person. So it just shows how brilliant this fandom is, because you don't see these people for literally, say, for three years on end, for an example, yet you just catch up from where you last left off. Grateful for those people that I've met, and anyway, um, not that everybody else isn't important, but moving on to Tom Baker, because that's what you're all here for. I got a photo op of Tom Baker, because I had to, because it's Tom Baker, and I was really excited to meet him, uh, because it's, it's Tom Baker. He's the most iconic Doctor of all time, I've always wanted to meet him. And here is the actual photo, it's just your standard sort of showmaster style photography piece, and um, yeah, with the blue backdrop in. I got a little bit caught off guard, I must admit, the face I'm sort of pulling is quite sort of fangirl because, you know, there's no denying I was completely sort of dying inside of excitement from being sat next to Tom Baker because it's one of those people that just has that sort of atmosphere behind him and that presence and even when you just hear his voice and him laughing or saying jokes and he was holding some jelly babies just to add to it just to add to the amazing excitement and yeah he was absolutely lovely to me honestly uh, and that was the first time that I met him that day so you can tell I may have spent more money to meet him a bit later in the day because hey I couldn't help myself anymore obviously we all knew that was going to happen but yeah I really do love that photo I'm going to get a friend as well as I've said with my literally John Barrowman photo op, Pearl Mackey one and David Warner one, which is all just out of shot currently on my wall that I still haven't got photo frames for. So yeah, I do need to definitely do a bit of a photo frame shot at some point to get all these nice photos nicely framed, especially this one, because it is like a gem in my collection, I think. I do absolutely... It's just, that's Tom Baker, like, right next to me, and his hair's pretty similar to how mine used to be. So yeah, that's quite fun. Somebody that I also want to talk about that I don't really want to overshadow, I did also meet Louise Jameson, of course who plays Leela, the fourth Doctor's companion. 
I met her such a long time ago, it feels like now, I think probably back in 2010. I in fact have her autograph in this book from a very long time ago. She was literally, I think, the second person that I ever met from Doctor Who. So yeah, quite a long time coming with her. As you can see, there's the photo with her that I got. So it is a rather nice piece. I do quite like it. So I decided not to get an autograph from her. But I did decide to get a photo op because I don't have a selfie or anything with her from when I last met her. Uh, so yeah, I got a photo op her. She was only £10 and she was really nice to meet once again, especially after listening to some of her big finish work where they've no doubt padded out Leela, such as in Gallifrey and the War Doctor Adventures. And yeah, she was just lovely as always. And it's nice to just kind of hold both of these up together and kind of go, the Doctor and her companion and you know it's because obviously I can't meet Nicholas Courtney and I can't meet Sarah Jane anymore because bless them Elizabeth Sladen's no longer with us sadly I would have loved to meet them honestly I met John Levine as well so you know I can't exactly get any better than that uh, but yeah I think that generally it was just so lovely to meet those two and of course after a while me being me I was like you know what it's Tom Baker and I've got Colin's autograph and I've got Sylvester's autograph and I've got Peter Davison's autograph and I've basically got every Doctor's autograph that I've met so far apart from Peter Capaldi. So you know what, whilst I'm here in London and chances are, you know, I've travelled pretty much the length of the whole country to meet Tom Baker, I may as well get it autographed and that is kind of a rare thing for me to do. I never normally get an actual professional photo of like £35 and also go and get an autograph and that's exactly what I did because Adam went and got one as well and then I blame him entirely for this not gonna lie. We queued up at the very end of the day to see Tom and uh, we were literally the last two people to um, actually see him so he was no doubt a bit shattered by the very end and yeah I got this lovely promotional image of him from his opening season with the Daleks in the background there and it's got two Ben. Tom Baker, Doctor Who, and then four in Roman numerals. So I'm just happy to actually have Tom Baker's autograph in my collection, and I would love to get maybe a few more of the Doctors in the future. There's that Paul McGann, that would be lovely. But yeah, I think that generally it's just so nice to actually have that, and I feel like there's a much nicer experience between actually getting the autograph and seeing him right on the actual image and uh, addressing it to you as to Ben, and you just see it all. I, in fact, um, Pete actually very kindly took a few photographs of the signatures getting put on and you could probably see me in the background looking rather nervous so I'll probably put those images in now for all of your joy to see me basically once again fangirling. Happy that I got this and no regrets from getting this autograph because I've now got Tom Baker's signature. I can't be happy with that. Just when you think that everything is over and the event is ended, me and Adam were having a little stroll outside the convention. We were just kind of wandering outside to get some fresh air before we went to the pub to meet the others. And all of a sudden we looked over our shoulder to see Tom Baker walking out of the convention with, um, I'm assuming sort of not necessarily his bodyguard, but the person that he was helping him throughout the day. He was there with his little walking stick and his Sainsbury shopping bag. And yeah, he kind of walked in our direction and we thought, this is the fourth Doctor for goodness sake, we're not going to have this sort of opportunity again. So whilst he was sort of waiting, I think, to cross the road, we went to go and see him again and, you know, have a little conversation with him. And he was just so nice and once again has a lovely sort of atmosphere behind him. And uh, yeah, we got a photo with him. Adam got one on his phone and then I also got one as well. And arguably, I don't know what it is, I do love my professional photo op that I got, but I do love actually having a proper selfie photo with them because it feels a little bit more personal because both of you are there and quite close and literally his head is like this close from mine and it's all very, very exciting. But yeah, it's, I've met Tom Baker. Ah. I thought that I would meet sort of Colin and I knew that I would meet Sylvester. Hopefully I would have met Peter Davison, but I honestly nearly got to the point of accepting that I would never meet Tom. But now, that day finally came and... That preparation literally only took like half a week to do because I wasn't going up until I found out very last minute that it was going on and then I got my train ticket and went down <laughs> and then I came back on the same day and I was absolutely shattered and I got home at like 10 o'clock at night and yeah it was a great day and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> That's that for this video I hope that I've been able to kind of put in a few images here and there to kind of support what I've been saying in this video maybe a few of the landmarks that I visited or something like that but yeah it's been a little bit of a different more laid back video to usual but I kind of like filming these every so often just to kind of reflect on the day and it's something a little bit nicer of being able to not film during the actual day itself and kind of just enjoy it and talk to people and honestly I would just like to rephrase again the amount of people that I met on that day and was so nice about the channel and what I've done in the past for the channel and the things that I've uploaded and it was honestly on the way home I did get a little bit emotional because you just don't get used to 
actually hearing those things. It's one thing uploading videos on a weekly basis, but it's another thing actually hearing from the people that watch them and actually take time out of their day to watch your videos and sort of comment on them and support them. And yeah, it really does mean a lot. And honestly, everybody who I met that day was absolutely lovely. I can't wait. The beauty of this is I can't wait to meet more of you in the future as well, because no doubt I'll be back down London again, hopefully soon. And if you do see me at a convention, and you would like to come and say hello and i don't know some of you like photos i sometimes normally take photos with you all anyway to sort of put on twitter but if you see me and want to come and say hello if i'm with adam or with anybody who i'm with that day then I'm more than happy for you to come over and say hello because i'm not gonna lie i know that a few of you can be like a little bit nervous to start with but the truth is i'm just as nervous honestly and i enjoy meeting you guys as much as hopefully you enjoy meeting me and it just makes the day so much nicer and that experience so much better and yeah i'm really grateful for all the support and i'm just grateful for meeting tom baker to be honest and i could shook my hand as well so yeah a few more tom baker videos coming in the future i'm on a little bit of a hype with him at the minute such as that i've also got city of death vinyl to review as well and then also the fourth doctor target novel the city of death so quite a lot on the way coming soon and yeah, quite a lot of general videos from other areas as well. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in a review of some kind in the near future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.